Hi there, I'm Anastasia Tolpigo, Application Engineer with Crystal Instruments. Today, I will expand on our last EDM video and focus on setup for the Sime Suite test. A successful connection between the PC and Spider controller is crucial before starting any vibration test. More information on establishing a connection between the Spider and PC as well as ensuring a closed control loop can be found below. Today's steps will focus on specific parameters and requirements necessary for completing a proper sine sweep vibration test. Where a random test generates many frequencies over a range at once, a swept sine test generates only one frequency and sweeps up or down through the range. Feedback from the control signal is then used to adjust the output amplitude such that the response amplitude of the unit under test matches a defined profile. Once EDM is connected to the spider, review the input channel table and measured signals to start. In-depth instructions on these may also be referenced in our introductory overview for a random vibration control test. Next, go to the test configuration to set up test pr parameters, testing profile, run schedule, and saving options. The first menu item is the shaker parameters. Ensure that correct limits are set as per the shaker manufacturer guidelines. The next item down is the test parameters. These typically vary by test type. You may choose the signal plot points per frame where a larger number will mean a greater resolution in the frequency domain. Note the sweeping type and rate. The specific sweeping speed will be determined in the run schedule. The measurement strategy is set to a proportional tracking filter by default. Tracking filters greatly reduce the noise in harmonic signals above and below the sine drive frequency. The center frequency is always tuned to the current drive frequency, allowing all other signals to be filtered from measurement and control. The filter bandwidth can either be fixed or proportional to the current frequency. The spider system continually updates the tracking filter coefficients based on the current center frequency and bandwidth. It has a stop band rejection of about negative 60 dB. The output of the filter is averaged to produce a control amplitude value which is then used by the comparator to correct the output drive amplitude. Now let's take a look at the test profile, where we will set the desired frequency range and levels. The sine profile table also allows users to set the levels in velocity and displacement requirements in addition to acceleration. Once these have been established, be sure to check the profile against the shaker settings for any incompatibility. Next, within the run schedule, we can create a program for how the controller will sweep through the frequency range and in which direction. Double click on the default entry to adjust or click to add a new. The sweeping will begin at the start frequency and either head up towards the right or down towards the left frequencies at the given level. We can also choose to sweep for a fixed duration, sweep speed, or even cycle count. Click OK to save and exit the entry once complete. Add a tracked dwell to the schedule to additionally follow and excite a specific resonance, or choose the fixed dwell to excite continuously at just one frequency. Finally, within the miscellaneous menu, choose the saving strategy. We recommend saving all sweeps. With test configuration complete, we are ready to begin the test. Click Run and review the spider checklist. Then allow the controller to perform a random pretest. Random excitation applies less energy across a wide range of frequencies. It is more reliable and has less impact to the unit under test. And so it is the default for sign tests. 
Proceed and let the test complete. Once finished, if you have selected to record time streams, go to Tools and download from Spider Internal Storage. Select a signal to migrate to the Run folder and review. You may also use review mode to further analyze the saved data and export to other formats. For more information on Crystal Instruments and our vibration control software and hardware, please visit our website at crystalinstruments.com.